And welcome to CNET Book Club. I'm Dan Ackerman. I'm Scott Stein. And we've talked to a lot of serious authors about serious books over the last year and a half. Uh, Walter Mosley, Jaron Lanier, Jeff mm. Vandermeer. Yep. But we thought it would be fun for the holiday season to show you some fun books you can get as gifts that are actual physical books that just don't work as ebooks, not available as ebooks. These are books from our own collection. This is stuff like I got two big bookshelves put into my living room. And these are some of these I've had for years, some of them I just bought. And they're ones that I don't want on a Kindle. A lot of times they're constructed to be read because they have different typefaces. They do a lot of like, they, they literally put things into the book physically. Mm -hmm. There's some things you just can't recreate. Even simple illustrations don't read well on the Kindle. It, it doesn't have a good way to resolve it. Yeah, it's not a good way to go. In fact, uh, you know, if you see a visual book that's on a Kindle sale, uh, y you'll see if you download one that usually every the layout gets messed up. So FYI, if you're giving that as a gift to someone. So go with the physical book. Keep the Kindle for the pure text. Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm going to start off. We're going to show off some books here. Uh, this is one I got very recently that I'm pretty excited about. This is Art and Arcania. It's a big visual history of Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, and it really goes all the way back in time and has a lot of really fantastic art, like early advertisements and things like that from the game, uh, and gives you a lot of backstory about Gary Gygax and how it was created. And eventually it goes into things that like, I remember from when I was a kid, like those great like Dungeon Master Guide style oh, yeah. illustrations and things like that. It's like a total uh, flashback. Oh yeah, it's just basically just flashback after flashback. And uh, if you grew up with any of this stuff, you will remember this. Oh, look at these books and ads and things like that. A lot about metal miniatures. Did you ever paint metal miniatures, Scott, or, nope, or collect I them? I, nope, I never did. Although I was, very, uh, I was very interested in them, but I was the abstract board game and... and sleight of hand magic person. That's sort of like, I danced around that, but mm -hmm. I'm now getting into Dungeons and Dragons. See, we, I had the map tiles, uh, and I had little figures, I would paint them. They were all made of lead back then. Yeah. So, you They're know. Pu yeah, pewtery, yeah. A anyway. Now we just 3D print them. Anyway, this is uh, <laughs> right. usually around 50 bucks, and, um, and uh, Scott says he's seen it on sale. Yeah, so this, this thing too, with a lot of these physical books, like, check out, see if they're on sale. A lot of places you can get them on deals, especially this time of year. Amazon so. is discounting a lot of these books. I just looked a bunch of them. Yeah, up. like at a lot of place, a lot of bookstores are offering like 10, 20 percent discounts. So like you know, forget list price. Like a lot of times you can get some discount. Now I'm going to give you a little uh, uh, a little fun fact about this. Number one, the intro is written by Joe Bangiello, who's the actor who's like the werewolf on True Blood, and you see him oh, wow. in a bunch of other things. And one of the three co-authors is Sam Witwer, who's an actor who was uh, uh, in a couple of the Star Wars games yeah. and also in the American version of that Vampire and Werewolf and Ghost Live Together show, The Name of Which Escapes Me, uh, Being Human. Why them? He was the vampire in um, the American version of Being Human, and he is a co-author on this Dungeons & Dragons book. That's like fast. That's unusual. But um, yeah, that's like a great coffee table book. And speaking of D&D, &D, and then we'll get our D&D &D out of the system, I've, uh, you know, my, my kid who's, oh. who's 10, has been getting interested in Dungeons and Dragons, and I never played Dungeons and Dragons growing up more than like an hour, and I suddenly became interested. The Dungeon Masters there Guide. There it is, the, is the real fifth deal. edition. Now I've seen this on sale a lot over uh, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and even now. Uh, so shop around, see if you can. It's like list price fifty dollars, but you can get it for less than that, and it's awesome. I mean, I got this, the Player's Guide. And the Monster Manual, which is still they around. They have not changed the name of those since I was a kid. Having no. retired from the game in the sixth grade, that's the same books that we had. The covers were different. So I had the Monster it. Manual because I love the idea of all these monsters in a book. And I had Fiend Folio and I had Monster Manual 2. Uh, but, but now I, I just got the Monster Manual. There are other books too. But the layout's fantastic. Uh, if you're interested in learning about the lore, and it also kind of doubles as a coffee table book. Yeah, it's book. a coffee table art book, even yeah. if you're not... And this is a little more list-heavy, but there's definitely a lot of really cool illustrations frankly, if you're really playing the game, you're probably using an app. Yes, we've talked about that. A lot of people use apps, but I still like the idea of pouring over a book, keeping it on a, on a shelf, and it's got a really nice feel. So anyway, I treated myself to that, and I've I got more of those coming from my kid. He doesn't know yet. Nice, nice. All right, Scott, I'm going to give you now uh, one that is new to me, but you apparently knew about ahead of time. I knew, uh, but haven't years. read it. It's like my, uh, my second House infinite chest. of Leaves by yeah. Mark Danielewski, and it is apparently a, a cult favorite yeah. uh, from the early 2000s, I think. And even though it looks like a regular book, inside... There's a ton of interesting typography. Uh, there's all sorts of like writing in the margins. There's like weird, weird page layouts. There's two 
sets of footnotes written in different fonts so you can tell which person is writing the footnotes to this because it's about a person writing about a person who wrote about another person who wrote about like a cult movie that no one can find about some other guy who discovered like a hallway in his house that doesn't seem to structurally belong in the house and that's only the most top level of it. It's just a weird nightmarish dreamscape. It's very uh, David Lynchian. So I had a copy of House of Leaves years ago. In one of my many moves, I got rid of it because I just thought I would never read it. Now I want to read it again and we have to probably get another copy. But yeah, there's actual color photographs in here of things. Yeah, it's a and really stuff cool. Stuff that would never work on a Kindle. It's not available as an ebook. Yeah. Uh, I actually had to go to the Strand to get this copy, which cost me $18. Uh, I was a fool for getting rid of my... That might be my copy, for all I know. You might might have picked up the copy. Property of Scott S. Wow. Right, I left a little mark but in the margin. I'll tell you, I really just started this, and I am just blown away by it. Just the first you know chapter or two, uh, very unsettling. If you like kind of weird fiction uh, with, with, with slightly supernatural, but you don't really know what's going on over tones, House of Leaves. And, and Mark Z. Daniel Luskia also has started releasing this series of books. I think it's like based on all 26 letters of the alphabet. So there are these massive, again, visual tomes with all sorts of puzzly uh, text. And I bought, I think that I bought on a Kindle and was very disappointed that I bought it on a Kindle. Oh. But it was on Kindle sale, so it was like $1.99. And I, I, I took a, a leap onto it. But if you're also interested, that, that's out there too by that author. So I'll pick this up. This is a book that I picked up when I was interested in game design and game theory. There's a newer version than this one. But Raf Koster, who is a really acclaimed... Um, Thinker, game designer, worked on Ultima Online. This is a theory of fun for game design. What's really cool about this book is not only is it about the basic theory of games and theories of fun, but half of it is text and half of it is a comic. And so every page, you're kind of getting two parallel stories. As you, it's not like a comic book, but they're comic-like illustrations to tell a parallel tale to what's going on in the text here. So something like this is really meant to give you ideas as you flip through it, think about it. Uh, I started showing it to my kids, and it, I think it's fun because you can you kind of think outside the box with with gaming, and it's just a really fun read. It kind of almost reminds me of uh, well, another great book that I didn't bring in is uh, the Understanding Comics trilogy yes, yes. By, by Scott, Scott. McCloud, yes. which those are great. Remains amazing. He has that making comics, uh, reinventing comics. Yeah. This has almost a feel of that. Uh, I yeah, definitely you don't need want... to be in the industry to appreciate it. Like exactly. Like the Scott McCloud books, they just tell you good visual storytelling that will help you in a lot of fields. Yeah, you're getting sort of like a fundamental understanding of maybe the uh, the cognitive elements of what makes gaming fun. So, great book, and there's a newer version than this. You get a newer edition. Yeah, I've seen the new cover. Yeah, yeah. so... You know what makes gaming great. fun? It's got loot boxes. Lots and lots of loot boxes. Yes. Uh, I <laughs> Give some loot boxes for the holidays. <laughs> okay, here's a here, here's a crazy one. I've wanted uh, to get this It has book. this cool vintage look. It's called Ship of Thesis, uh, and it is by J.J. Abrams and an author named Doug Dorst. But it looks like, inside this slipcover, you know, an old book that you would get from the library. It's got the little library tag on it here on the side. And there's a story in the book, but there are basically two people who have taken this book out of the library, and they keep writing each other notes in the margins of the book. And they also like insert little postcards and uh, little flyers. So this is all part of the book. Obviously you can never do this. Look, there's a whole letter in here, a handwritten That's letter you cool. have to read. It's it, there, There's much more text outside of the story than inside. Uh, newspaper clippings. The pages are perfectly yellowed around and the pages edges. have a great yeah. aging to them. Yeah, it looks very um, authentic. So you, so you basically have the story of the book and then this other story that's happening in the background um, I have not gotten very far in this, but someday I will get back to it. But it's a fantastic looking book, and it would look great anywhere. It is, uh, I think I saw it on Amazon for like 20 bucks. It used to, it, when it came out, it was like 40. And that almost reminds me, of the. Uh, it gives me a feel of the, the Griffin and Sabina books. Those books that, uh, that that had little letters that you would open, and it was this ongoing oh, okay. tale. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have a, a Nick Bantock. That's what, he, a number, I can't believe I remembered that. He had a number of books that were like that with little puzzles. And Nick Bantock also, uh, talk about a used book to pick up, had this puzzle book called The Egyptian Jukebox mm. that I've got on my shelf, which is a great visual puzzle book. I didn't bring visual puzzle books, but I brought other types of books. I, I'm looking for a good visual puzzle book that needs to be made in 2019. Uh, this, I'm just going to write to Simon Stallenhag. Simon Stalin has been a, a book superstar lately. I think a lot of people, Jeff Bacalar turned me on to his art and his work. Um, he has had two other books 
A third one came out now uh, called The Electric State. I think you should get all of them. But The Electric State, what's cool is that these books, not only are they, they, they gorgeous, they explore these dystopic Swedish sure. worlds that take place in the past but feel like the future. So this is like an alternate 90s where uh, there's been some apoc apocalyptic cataclysmic uh, virtual reality game that people were playing. There's a lot of ruins. Uh, there's a lot of mystery. And these incredible paintings, along with the storyline, you just flip through it like an incredible art book. I mean, it's definitely on the more mature side, but I think anyone would enjoy it. Uh, the, the paintings are amazing. Again, it's not like this at all, but it kind of reminds me of Dinotopia in the sense that there's this like unfolding, amazing story that's told through art. Uh, his other two books are, are great. This is a purely art book. You would only ever want to get this in physical form. Mm -hmm. uh, no regrets purchase. I just, I, again, I feel like these books, I don't always read all the way through. I like to flip through them. But to have them, you can go back to them. Yeah, you get ideas and you become uh, very inspired. But I love the uh, I love the ruins in this book. Nice, nice. I like that. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to show you one now, Scott, that's brand new. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a show that we all know and love, Stranger Things. Oh, nice. And they've done a book like about the show, but in an 80s style. So it looks like a weathered old book. It's got that plastic cover on it like you would get at the library or from school. It's got a little used uh, bookstore price tag on it that says it's in fair condition, which I thought this is. was a used book when oh, yeah, I saw yeah. it like, randomly. There was even phone. a note on the outer app saying, don't panic, the book is supposed to look like this. And inside, look, it's got some water stains on the inside. It's really like really nicely aged. And there's a lot of really great art inside, oh, besides wow. the usual behind the scenes stuff. And obviously you can't get that on a Kindle. Yeah. And it's it's really a good mix of like, about the people who made the show, about the actors who were on the show, behind the scenes stuff, uh, little po uh, pages from, uh, you know, biographies mm -hmm. and, uh, and all kinds of stuff like this. So I thought this was really well done. And uh, if you're a fan of the show, it's certainly a good pickup, and I think this was, uh, I saw it on Amazon for $16, down from the usual 36 Okay. So, so good good call there. A book that I did not bring in, but uh, but I would also recommend, I'm going to talk about books I didn't bring in, because it's gigantic. <laughs> That's uh, the meta podcast within the podcast. Right. Look up this book, because it's the best weird giant art book you could ever mm -hmm. get, and it's been around for years. It got re-released a couple of years ago. Codex Serafinianus. Oh, yes. It is, oh, why didn't you bring that in? Because it's gigantic, because it wouldn't even fit in my backpack. It's, uh, it's expensive. I think it's like $80. Uh, it's just this beautiful, it's more like a Tashin type book, where, and the, the pages are well textured. It's written in gibberish, or supposedly gibberish, or maybe it's another language. It was, it was created as this uh, spinoff of the Voynich manuscript, maybe like a, like a commentary on it. It's uh, very bizarre, surreal pictures of people doing all sorts of things, alien evolving stuff. It, it just feels like a text that got downloaded out of another dimension, but that's a great one. Speaking of other dimensions, Jeff Vandermeer. Ah, our friend Jeff. Our friend Jeff, who, uh, you know, his books are fantastic. He has a book which you have to get in physical form. You can also get it in digital, but get it in physical. Um, it's one of the best writing books out there for anyone who wants to think about writing or dream of other worlds. called Wonder Book. This is the previous edition that I bought. He has a new edition. A new, yeah, I've seen that. With, I think, 60 pages of new stuff. First of all, it's fantastically laid out and, you know, all sorts of really cool maps and interesting flow charts and visuals and inspiring paintings, uh, weird ads and things. But it's a book on, on writing and creating. And he has, it feels like dozens of cameos from famous authors. I think Neil Gaiman's in here, um, Charles Yu, uh, Lev Grossman, George R. R. Martin, uh, Ursula K. Le, Le Guin. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's incredible. Karen Lord. So, Kim Stanley, I'm just going to keep on. But anyway, <laughs> they all have thoughts about writing. So it's like not just him. It's like a greatest hits of other people thinking. So it's just a, it's a great book on a lot of levels. And it doesn't even cost that much. I think it was like $20. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it feels, it's like I a very like hefty. I feel like I'm adding the new version of this to my, to my wish list because I don't I, have a copy of this. Oh, you don't? Oh, no. you have to get yeah, this. Yeah, this yeah, is, totally. I, I kind of want to get the new version even mm -hmm. though I have this version, because I think it's, I think it's wonderful. So that's awesome. Wonderful. And of course, Jeff Vandermeer was our very first book club guest. He was our very first, and now, uh, and then you know, Annihilation and, and mm -hmm. Born and all that other stuff. So he's uh, and he's got another one coming. Yeah. Out. Uh, so it's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, of cool books, here's a book about cool books by another cool author who also writes cool books. 
The author is Grady Hendrix, and he's got another new book out uh, called We Sold Our Souls. But this is his nonfiction work, Paperbacks from Hell. And it is a study of 1970s and 80s pulp paperbacks, horror fiction, uh, things like that. And you will find all of these fantastic book covers in here. And he talks about them and uh, the origins of them and the different weird authors, some of whom, you know, were never seen again, some of whom went on to become very famous. And it's just, once again, you have to see these these book covers in, in real time because they are just fantastic. Like, here's all the knockoffs of, like, Rosemary's Baby, where everyone's got a demon baby. All the demon baby books are in one chapter. <laughs> That's pretty great. And uh, all the, um, you know, the vampire screaming? books. Here's the Here's screaming the Sentinel. One. Let's see what the screaming all is. All the screaming people. That, oh, I feel like that man. came, I remember that. Well, these are about, uh, these are the, the religious uh, horror books, uh, uh, Legion, Dark Angel, Unholy Communion. So those are all collected. And this is, this is really, really fun to flip through if you like uh, kitschy 70s, 80s uh, uh, book culture, and they don't make book covers like this anymore. Like I still go to the Strand and I look through the, the paperback, the old paperback rack and try to find cool stuff yeah. just to have it because it looks so awesome. And uh, Grady Hendrix also wrote uh, this other book that just came out, a fiction book called We Sold Our Souls about a rock band that apparently sells its soul to the devil in exchange for success. Uh, and and it's, a, it's, a, it's a good, creepy, music-tinged thriller. Well, maybe because of that and, and everyone getting into this, they need to make more books with covers like that. Oh, yes. I it's, mean, gonna, it's bound to happen. Stranger Things and all that stuff. That, that retro style, now everything, well, Kindle books don't have covers, really. Just yeah. like we lost album art by going to digital music, uh, we've lost book cover art by going to uh, Kindles. What kills me is when the digital book cover art suddenly changes. Oh, right, So, yes. like, you know, all of a sudden, overnight, the my book looks different, yeah. and it, it throws me off. So... Uh, I'm going to go to a topic that I've also been really obsessed with uh, after virtual reality, which is immersive theater. Now, you may not be aware of what immersive theater is, or maybe you are, which is the uh, you know site-specific, transformative things. If you've seen Sleep No More, if you've seen Then She Fell in New York, uh, things that are defy explanation uh, and and often will expand beyond uh, normal spaces. Well, this group called uh, as I got deeper into the immersive theater world, as you're collecting some books, uh, this group called. Um, Odyssey Works has been exploring a very particular type of uh, of experience, which they call like a immersive experiences for one. Completely crazy, almost like the game. Handcrafted things that just happen to one person, where everything around them changes. They know they're part of it, but it's more artistic. And these worlds, and, and so this group, Odyssey Works, you can't experience those things really because they cost a crazy amount and they usually don't happen to that many people. But they decided to create this really cool art book uh, published by Princeton Architectural Press that is um, discusses their methods and their art and has an interview with Rick uh, by Rick Moody, who I think experienced one of these. So, it, again, crazy charts, uh, interesting f flow charts. A lot charts, of visual storytelling. Visuals, um, talking about the art, what it means to create their immersion. Yeah. It's a book that you'd want to flip through and think about. A lot of and, playing with the ty typography and the color of the text, which again you can't do on a Kindle. Exactly. So it is. Um, it's fascinating if you want to think about art differently. If you want to think about what it, if you're interested in VR, if you're interested in things like future tech, and you want to think about what it means to create something that's immersive or AR, this might be a really cool book to pick up or pick up for someone who's into that. Nice, nice. Now. For someone who's into more traditional uh, visual storytelling, like, I don't know, Star Wars, uh, there's this new book called Creatures and Aliens, and I'm showing it to you for two reasons. One, my seven-year-old was fascinated with this because it's not just a standard, you know, photo book of stuff. It's actually, again, has all this uh, almost 3D stuff in it where, yes, it has all these, uh, you can look through all these, like, drawings. You can pull stuff out Ooh. of, like, concept drawings of different characters. Okay. Chewbacca. There's more Chewbacca. And there's a lot of like little flip things that open up. So it's like a, it's, oh, look, there's, there's, there's Peter Mayhew and there's Chewbacca. I've never seen Peter Mayhew before. And now, now you have. Or, and some or, of I haven't these seen really, Peter Mayhew. Oh, this is great. This little mini book inside of Ewok sketches. And it's like several pages, just like this. So it's a book, it's several books within a book. And it's that same playful sort of, you know, let's shove a bunch of stuff yeah. inside of here. Um, and, and, and look at early concept drawings of Jar Jar. Were they all... He didn't get any better. Duck build? Yeah, yeah, it looks like it. Looks like it. Uh, so I thought this was really cool. Oh, uh, this, really is, cool. This, this is new, $29, Creatures and Aliens. And uh, I really love that uh, they've done more than just a standard art book, have all these little pullouts and extras. 
And then, Scott, I have a bonus for you. Yeah. This is the book that I mentioned to you briefly. I don't know if I've shown it to you I yet. I hate that you have this book. Uh, I want this book I'm very tell you badly. This I, is I, I am very envious about this Giraffes book. on yeah. Horseback Salad, which is a graphic novel that recreates the lost script that Salvador Dali wrote for the Marx Brothers. It was actually never even a full script. He did a treatment and maybe a few pages. It's bananas. And, uh, and, and, and some guy went around and tracked down as much information as he could about this never made movie and finally got you know all the treatments and everything and basically wrote a script around it. And he, and he got uh, that guy, Tim Heidecker, uh, who does... Yeah. Uh, I l- yeah, he's fantastic. Oh, well, it's him and Eric. Yeah, yeah. And he's done a bunch of other stuff since then. So he, he was things. part of the writing team on this. He basically had a, a team who would write like Marx Brothers style gags and jokes to follow along the storyline, and then somebody illustrated it, and it has a lot of background about uh, about the book itself and how it came together, but it's a really cool, oh God, funny, cool. abstract graphic novel. Now, the catch is, I have a copy right here. It doesn't come out until March of 2019. Ah, but why? how did I get it? The it's same way you can finished. get it. Why is this right? not out now? You know what, Scott? I'll tell you from first-hand okay. experience, that's the book industry. I know, it's, I, it kills I think me. I, I think I turned in my book, and it definitely did not come out until almost exactly one year later. Yeah. So that's what happens. But I got this at New York Comic Con. So if you go to a convention or a book convention or anything, uh, the company uh, uh, Quirk Books is already out there selling this. So okay. you may not be able to get it in a retail store, but if you go to any kind of convention or anything, uh, I'm sure they will be happy to sell you a copy at the full retail price. Are they New York based? Can I knock on their door? I don't know. That's a good question. Can I've, I find? Can you I know find? what? I've got a card from somebody over there. I'll, 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 I'll send you their email. You know what to get me for my for my birthday next <laughs> that's year. That's right. Uh, and and, and yeah. it's it's super trippy. It's not like a standard jokey Marx Brothers movie. It's much more. It, it's much more out there because of Salvador Dali. But yeah. uh, they call it the strangest movie never made. Um, anyway, I would have paid a premium for that. Book. You've got a great selection here of actual, real-world, physical book gifts you can get for people. Um, I think I think anyone who collects real books would love would love any one of these. And we are going to put all the links to them on the article associated with this video, so yep. you can just go through there and click on them all. Add them to your collections. Uh, this has been super fun. I've been thinking about this for a long time. Yeah, I'm so glad we finally did this. We should do more of these. Basically, what's on our bookshelves <laughs> because the, the, the stuff keeps growing. But uh, this is really cool. Awesome, awesome. All right. Well, anyway, uh, I'm Dan. I'm Scott. And uh, that's CNET Book Club for this year. We'll see you in 2019. Bye now. Bye.